Um, we'll start by just having everyone go around and introduce themselves. Uh, we'll start. We'll start with Macy. And uh, if you could give your your name, your school, and what sport you play. Uh, I'm Macy Woods, and I go to Union High School, and I play soccer. I'm Kaz Mears Parks. Also, you can also call me Kaz. Um, I will be attending Humboldt State University. Um, I'm Tanaria. Oh, sorry. Oh, and Kaz, you play <laughs> basketball. Yeah, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> this is my call. I didn't say that. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> um, my name is Tanari Delaney, and I play basketball and I run track. And I will be attending PCC and transferring to OZ. Right on. Awesome. Um, so, yeah, um, just first off, I'd like to start um, on, on Juneteenth. Uh, this, this recording has coincided with that day. What, what, is it, what does Juneteenth mean for each of you, and why do you think it should be recognized and um, you know, you um, see some of like Governor Kate Brown saying it'll be a, a Oregon State holiday. So, so why is that important? Anybody can start. <laughs> I think it's very important, like memorial wise. Like, yeah. it's just something that symbolizes basically our freedom, like releasing those chains that we had for so long and just being able to just live how we want to live and not have to be chained down by anyone. Yeah. I think it's like the start of like us finally be free. And I think it's great that we're finally embracing it because I know a lot of people didn't even know that it was a holiday or even a thing. And so I just think that it's really like, it's a significant holiday that should be celebrated. Yeah, I kind of agree. Like, um, it's kind of crazy that it's now just because of everything that's going on, it's now like starting to be like a bigger, like bigger thing. and. Be a lot of people or well, more people are celebrating it more just because of what's going on which is kind of um a little bit of, of a sad thing because i feel like it should be all always celebrated and it should be always like a, made a big deal but you know at least it's happening now yeah you talk about not a lot of people not knowing it, it i did not know i was not aware of it until you know this week this past week and i, I was never taught about it in school why do you think why do you think days like Juneteenth, other big moments in, in Black American history are not taught in school and what needs to be taught in, in schools that, that currently aren't? Well, I think it just shows like some, there's governments that don't show what they don't want other people to see. So like there's some parts in our history that our government doesn't want us to see or like there's things that they don't want us to know about and that's why it's not taught or it's not, or people don't know about it until like they do further research upon people who did learn about it, who dug up, who went out and explored and actually was curious to know about these things. So I think that just not being, not teaching it in schools and like, cause for me, I didn't know about it until like one of my other, one of my other friends was like, Hey, it's Juneteenth. I'm like, what is, what is Juneteenth? Like, why is it significant? Like, I didn't know that until like I was in high school. So for me to like grow up not knowing what it, why it was significant, what, what it really meant, it's, real, it's really glaring. It's like, why didn't our schools teach that? What, what is it? What, why are you trying to hide it? Why are you trying to like not tell us about our history or what is significant to like America, to like our freedom, how we got like our rights? Yeah, I feel like a lot of like, a lot of them, like, in my um, just years of being in school, like, I've never been taught, really, like, the African-American side of just history and, like, where we all, like, where African-Americans play in history, and it's, it's really sad, but I feel like that's because, like, kind of what Kaz was saying, like, they don't want us to see, like, the bad side of America, like, they don't want us to see what actually happened because, I mean, a lot of African Americans, a lot of Native Americans that played into, you know, our history are gone, and they just don't want to see that. Yeah, going off that, I totally agree, because for me, at my school, I didn't even learn half the stuff that I'm learning on Twitter, on, like, Instagram and stuff about Black history, and it's, like, seriously so sad. Like, I remember last year I was in U.S. history, and I learned two weeks of Black history, and then the rest was, like, Vietnam War and all that stuff, and it was just, like, 
like I'm not going to spend more time on that. It's just sad. Right. Yeah. There, there was a question posed on Twitter a while back um, that was tr kind of trying to illuminate this, this kind of lane here. When was your guys' first black teacher? When did you have your first black teacher? I have never had a black teacher. I've never had a black teacher. Yeah. Uh, I've never had a black teacher. Wow. <laughs> Maybe a substitute, but I've never. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've had one substitute that was black, yeah. yeah. But that was in high school. Same, that was in high school too. So. I think that was my junior year. I had someone that was colored. Yeah. Yeah. Uh I was when I talked to Isaiah Jones a couple of weeks ago. He said the same thing. Um, what? Why is this a big problem? What? Why do we need more black teachers in schools? Um, if you could explain it, you know, from from that side of things, of you know, I've grown up my whole life with all white teachers. I see people that look like me. Why? Why do we need more black teachers? Um, it kind of shows, like it shows me, and all it shows a lot of like. I don't know, like African-American people, students, that we can be more than just students. We can be teachers. We can be anyone higher up. You know what I mean? Like, um, for me, like, I don't know. It's just, it's amazing to see um, Black women, Black men being my teacher because, I don't know, it's just cool. It, it's, it, it's different. Um, it makes me think a lot about, like, what's going on also. And, like, when I had my first black substitute, I was, like, a lot of people were shocked. A lot of people were like, we have a black substitute. Like, what? And that's, it's so sad that people, you know, had to, like, I don't know, see that and have to, like, it's not normal. Like, this is basically what I'm saying. Like, it wasn't normal. And a lot of people were, like, confused or, like, what? This is crazy. So, I don't know. I, totally I think it's, oh, sorry. Oh, you can go, Macy. Okay. Um, yeah, I just think that like seeing um, like the like more black people in like um, teaching jobs, like will really give students like, oh, I could do this too. Like seeing only white teachers, at least for me, has always kind of put me in an awkward position because mm -hmm. I'm usually the only like black kid in my classes. And it's just yeah. like, kind of, I don't know, it just kind of puts you in a weird position of how they interact with you too. So I just think it's better to see more like black people succeed and you know that you could get there. Because I feel like they try to kind of hide it sometimes. Yeah. To add on to like both of your guys's, to me, honestly, it feels like it. I'm more comfortable around talking to someone of like color, you know, like because it's like they connect with me, like they know, they understand what it's like to be someone of color, to, to be someone of a minority. So that's why I think it'd be great and awesome to have like more colored people become like teachers and having to like learn and having them teach for us. Do you think having more black teachers would would allow us to learn more about black history in our schools? I don't think so. I I think either way teachers have like a certain um certain like things that they have to teach and there's no um book there's no textbook that's certainly about African American um history. So I think that even with teachers being of colored like they're not there's not going to be any I don't think there's going to be any difference about what is taught yeah I, I kind of agree with you T I agree with that because a lot of teachers stick to like stick to the books stick to the rules be like hey we're gonna we have to get these curriculums done we got to do all of this but I but there's some teachers out there that'll just go off for like a day or two and just like teach about what why to say significant what's so important about it but most of the time i don't think a lot of teachers would do that but i mean i mean yeah people of color that are teaching that are teachers they probably would go off of it go off just to teach about that day and why it's so significant and why we should know about it but most of the time they won't well teachers in general won't i should say yeah i agree with what you guys are saying too like um, I feel like the teachers would probably stick to the book because, you know, they have to get, like, the criteria done, like what you guys were saying. But I do feel like maybe having a Black teacher would make, like, the white students maybe listen more. Because at least for me, when I was going through, like, my Black history unit, a lot of the, like, white kids were just on their phone. Like, they didn't really care about it. They, like, would make funny comments and think it's, like, hilarious. Like, it's just stupid stuff. 
And I just feel like maybe having a black teacher, they'd want to listen more and be more educated because sometimes, at least from my white teachers I've experienced, they just kind of roll past the Black History Month really fast. Um, the, the Black Lives Matter protests um, that started in response to the killing of George Floyd have been going on for three weeks now. Have any of you participated um, in those and, and kind of what have your experiences been? I have not participated in a protest, but um, I've been in contact with my team, like my college team and all that. And we've been like talking about it. We've been learning. We've been teaching each other about like the Black Lives Matter protests and all that. And we're now doing like a video of like of us holding signs to support the BLM protests. Um, I haven't um, actively participated in any protest, and that's because um, of my parents um, a little bit because they're kind of scared to, you know, see me out there, but I've been wanting to, like, since it all started, I've been wanting to really badly because I feel like, I don't know, I'm a part of it, and I just want to go out there and fight for an amazing cause, and I want to be a part of history. Um, I feel like it's so important. The protests are amazing, even if they're not um, peaceful. I still feel like it's amazing. A lot of stuff has been getting done, and um, it's sad to see that they're kind of like toning down. Like there's not, I, have, I haven't really seen a lot of news anymore about it since it really started for some reason, just because of um, the cops that were um, got arrested and stuff like that I feel like people were like okay now what do we do um so I feel like I don't know it's it's really big yeah I have not um been able to do the, do the protest also because of my parents <laughs> and I was always scared but um yeah I just feel like it would have been it would be so cool to be out there because this is like a part of history like we're living in it but I have like actively like um what's it called donated to um, petitions and stuff like that right. and supported some black um, owned businesses online but I haven't I've done that to. too when when you what is the initial reaction that you guys have when you see something like George Floyd or Breonna Taylor or the countless others that have happened in Tacoma you have it happen uh, What's your initial reaction when you see that type of news come out? Not going to lie. Like, when I was watching the video of George Floyd, like, being held down by that, those police officers, I was so mad. I wanted to just get on the next plane, go out there, and, like, push the cops. Because they weren't even, no, none of the standards, none of the people watching were doing that. And I was like, I would have done that. I wouldn't care. Like, the dude... He was lying on the ground, like, no, that's not okay. I don't care if I was a civilian or a cop, that's not okay. But just watching like all of those videos and like any, like hearing about it makes me so mad and like really emotionally sad, like really sad. And it's just so hard just to see those videos and see that happening in our world today. Yeah, like, I don't want to say like, I was surprised because I wasn't like, um, it happens every day, even if it's not like the cops. It happens every day to African American people, to myself. Like a lot, like a lot of people don't realize that it's an everyday thing. It's not just what we see on social media. It's not just what we see on cameras. Like it's about what we see outside. Like when I first seen the, I didn't even watch the video until a couple days after because I was just so. I was just so mad, like I said, I was just so mad about the bisons and the people because that's just who you are as a person. It has nothing to do with color of your skin or anything. It has to do with who, you're, who you are as a person. And to see that many people just stand around and even the cops that were bystanders, it's just crazy to think that people don't have it in them to be like, this is not okay. Like, it, it's just crazy to me. Like, like I said, I was not shocked at all. I was very sad. It, it, I was mad, but it's like it happens on a daily basis and people don't see it because the media doesn't cover it and the media doesn't show it. So. Same with me. I was not shocked at all. I was just like heartbroken, mad, 
and also I think exactly what you guys were saying like how people were just standing and watching like that should not be happening at all and I also it just makes me sad like how many more does it have to take for like things to change like how many like moms have to cry you know how many more people have to die like it's just it's insane to me and sad and also I think what also um was interesting is a lot of like my white friends were really shocked about the video they're like oh my god like that's insane I'm like well this is happening every day like for so long like how can you not uh it it sounds like this is something you all deal with on kind of a daily basis or have friends or family members that deal with have you guys had experiences with the police in your in your everyday life um not uh not me i actually have a sheriff that lives down um at the bottom of my heel and he's always nice and you know i've ha- i've always had like good encounters with police but i can't say the same thing for my friends um, a lot of my friends have, you know, been scared, been, had just had bad interactions, and I've been able to see it, um, so, yeah. Yeah, I don't see it in my everyday life, for, like, I don't see it first happening to me, but when I was little, I did see it happen to my dad, I've seen it happen to my dad multiple times, actually, which was really scary, and for me to be that young to witness such a thing, yeah kind of get scared growing up yeah I personally haven't had it in my like personal life either like I mean either like to me yeah it's happened to my dad before when he got in a car accident actually and the officer was like yelling at him and my dad's like I'm the one that got hit like why are you trying to be mad at me so when when you see um kind of this moment in history and you see I mean there's been some some powerful images of people lying down on a, on a bridge you know, thousands of people lying down on a bridge in Portland. Do you feel like this is, this moment in time is different than moments past, you know, in your lifetimes, it was Ferguson, uh, in your parents' lifetimes, it was the Rodney King riots and probably your grandparents' lifetimes, it was the riots in the sixties. Does this moment, do you feel, feels different? Yeah, I think it feels entirely different just because people are mad. Like, people were mad before in cases, but all that builds up, and now you can see a lot of people, like, even the protests, like, becoming unpeaceful, like, people are just really mad, like, it just keeps happening, like, before, like, when you said, like, all those people, all those protests led up to it happening again, so it's just, like, this is different, a lot different than I've seen, because everyone's mad, everyone's really, really mad, like, it just keeps happening, the protests happened before, and guess what, we're back to plan, like, back to the start, so it's just, like, people want to see change, people are angry. I think it's more powerful than it was, has Mm -hmm. ever been, because all, all these other protests, like the civil rights movement, that's only where for like civil rights and then there's been like lgbt movements that was only for lgbt but now for like this one it's more of everyone's in in it together everyone's attacking everyone's going all at it everyone's there like you see lgbt you see all kinds of people of color you see immigrants you see everyone just protesting and saying this is not okay our system needs to change yeah i agree i totally think it's totally different um, to see like everyone of like cultural backgrounds going out to protest across the nation even I think I've seen it in like uh, other countries I forgot like England or something I forgot I saw it on Twitter but there's just so many people that are standing up for this movement I just I don't know maybe it's just living in it's different but I could totally see how it's way more powerful. Have your classmates and friends um how have they responded have they treated you guys differently have they messaged you what would it what do you feel like it would be like if you guys were actually in the hallways when um when when these protests are happening as a matter of go to you go (laughs) okay um well i actually had one of my classmates so um there's a situation um in my avid class we have like an avid group chat and um this um individual thought it was okay to send a very um inappropriate meme to our group chat and um I left the group chat and every one of my classmates were like what's going on like why'd you leave and 
they were very supportive but and so we got the situation taken care of but I've had a lot of people especially like my classmates and friends just text me with their opinions on it and they um and of course everyone's entitled to their opinion but it's like it's coming from a person that's never experienced things that I've experienced never experienced actually the racial um like inequality so it it hurt my heart to see a lot of people text me and tell me you know like an example would be like I don't see color and you know just like little things like that um so but I've also had support like I've had a lot of support from a lot of people so it's not just you know bad things but it's just the bad outweigh the good because there's a lot of people in this world that think the same exact way as those people who say I don't see color or you know just stuff like that so yeah see I have a small group of friends and they all support it like they all support the movement entirely and they've been telling me every time we meet up or hang out they've been telling me I told my uncle off or I told my grandmother off because she just did not support the movement she just didn't see color she didn't just support equal rights and didn't see human as human and she, she was just telling me all that. And she was like, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with leaving, losing a family member, losing a friend, because everyone is human, period. Like, there's no, there's no doubt about it. And for them to, like, say that, it, it's so touching. And it just really makes me happy. And, it, like, oh, it just makes me really happy and excited just to see them and just know I have these type of, kinds of friends. And... I know that I have like teachers and staff from like my high school that support me as well, like support this movement as well. Because I know, because when I was returning some things to the school, they came up to me and they're like, I support the movement entirely. That should not be happening. That should never, ever happen. Have ever happened. Yeah, for me, a lot of my friends have reached out to me and like, they were like shocked at what they were seeing and just like trying to support me. And I totally like, I love what they're doing to help me and support me. But the only thing that kind of like, I don't know, kind of put me in like a bad, I don't know, like bad mood, I guess, is just how like surprised they were that this was happening. Like, mm-hmm. they're like, why are they rioting? Like, this is bad. And I was just like, but you don't understand like how, like how much this has been happening, how many people have died, yeah. like what we've been through. And that's why I was just like, why are these people so shocked? Like my neighbor, she, um, I don't know, she's a little more conservative, but she came over. And my parents, I'm a mix, my mom's white, my dad's black. And she talked to my mom and she's like, how do you feel about this? Like, she just had no idea, like, what to even say. Like, she was asking, like, if all lives matter was okay to say. Like, she was just so, like, confused. And it's just, I don't know. I've had people support me, but I've also had people just don't really know what to do with all this happening. They're just a little confused. Why, why is it hurtful to hear... I, I don't see color or all lives matter. If you guys could explain that aspect for the people who are unaware. Well, like, like I've had to educate some, um, this person that said that to me, like it's saying that <clears throat> the people you love that are color, the people, even the people who, you know, are white, they, it's saying that you don't see what's going on. You don't see them for who they are. Like for me, my skin color is who I am. So if you don't see my color of my skin and you see past that, that means you see past all the things I've been through. You don't see me, you know, like my skin color is who I am. That's a part of me. So if you don't see a part of me, the big part of me, that's a big deal. So it's just like, when you say you don't see color, it's like, like, what do you see? Like what, like, believe it or not, everyone's skin color has to do with themselves, has to do with a lot of things in this world. So if you see past that, it's just like, what are you seeing in the people that you love and you, you know, appreciate? Like, it's just saying, like, I don't want to say you're ignorant, but it's just saying that you don't see people for who they are. So. I agree with you, T, and I'm not going to add anything on that because you said (laughs) how I would have said it, but for the All Lives Matter, no. Absolutely no. not. Because if they did matter, we wouldn't be having people like George Floyd dying every single day. We wouldn't have mm-hmm. all these other young colored kids being scared, growing up scared because they they see a cop. 
they or they just see anyone just looking at them nasty we wouldn't be seeing that so all lives don't matter until black lives matter yeah, yeah exactly what you guys are saying i agree 100 percent. that's exactly what i would say too um to to hop into i know some of you have to leave soon so um to hop into the the athlete athlete side of this have you guys experienced as athletes um prejudice or racism within your teammates coaches opponents fans etc um within your athletic playing careers i have not but um i've heard there was a lot of racism this year between kelso parents and audience and Hudson Bay parents and audience well more of like Kelso being racist towards like Hudson Bay I did hear about that and that did make me really really angry and I wanted to go out there and support Hudson Bay but I had like practice I had games and I knew I had to be there but it was hard hearing about that from someone else and not being able to be there to support them because I have friends over at Hudson Bay and not being able to support them personally like face to face and being able to stand right next to them that was hard yeah um personally I haven't um not that I can uh that I know of but I've seen like you know there has been maybe a handful of black reps that we've had and um it's like a different I don't want to say like vibe like it's a different comfort like it's a different I don't want to say they like gave me calls or anything like that it wasn't it wasn't about that it was about just the fact that you know they would tell me oh next time you run down go you know go harder they you know just little things like that but I've never had um um I don't know with sports I have never had any type of racial thing to me but like Haz was saying like um with the Kelso and Bay like I also we've had we have mutual friends that go to Bay and play on the team and just with you know volleyball with basketball with every sport it's just been like I want to go and support them but you know I I had practice had games but I was there um you know maybe after like just you know stuff like that but it was really hard to see that like and it's hard to go through that but the way Hudson Bay and a way a lot of um people stood up for Hudson Bay and stood up against you know people from Kelso or any other school it was amazing to see like students get out there and do try to do something and try to you know reach out um to the Colombian reach out to the media and let it known that this is what's going on instead of being quiet or just letting it happen because a lot of people just sit there and are bystanders but a lot of people stood up and was not right made t-shirts made you know posters made social media things like it was crazy and it made it warmed my heart up a lot um I personally only had one encounter of like um racism in my like sports I was like 11 and one of my teammates said my skin was doo-doo brown that's when I was like I didn't like think my skin was a bad thing and she just like kept laughing with all the other girls and it put me in like such an awkward position especially at a young age I was just like like what does that mean like why would you say that you know Mm-hmm. And then um, another one was um, I was at a union basketball game and some, I don't know, I think they're like sophomores at the top of the like student section. We were playing an all black team and they're like Wakanda forever, like screaming it. And I turned around and I was like, I looked at them and I was like, why would you say that? And they're like, come on, we're playing Wakanda. That's when I was like, are you serious? Like, I, that's when I was just like, I'm leaving. <laughs> I love the game. I was just like, this is not okay at all. And also, um, to bring up Kelso, my boyfriend plays for Evergreen, and he had some racial interactions with some of the Kelso parents and students yelling racial slurs and stuff during the games when he was playing Kelso. Uh, uh, Tanaria and Kaz, you you have one of the very few black head coaches in Clark County. Is that is that helpful as an athlete? And why don't we have more black coaches in, in Clark County? Um, you know, I, I think I could name them all. I could fit them all on one hand. Um, personally, it's been, um, amazing. It just because it's not like the special treatment. It's not even about that. It's, it's the comfort that it gives me, um, the understanding of like, you know, what I've gone through, um, in my past. So it's not that he's been easier on us. He's more been hard 
honest. Um, just because he knows that as black women, we have like there's a standard, but he wants to see us exceed, exceed that. Like he wants us to be more than just an athlete, like a student athlete. He just it's been very comforting to be with um, Demetrius Brooks and like it's it it's been just amazing and I personally I want to be a coach so I want I want to be up there I want to show um black women just African their African American community that we can do it like we need more um black coaches back just just more of us out there just to show people like me and people like other athletes that we can do it you know we can be more than just players on the court we can be more than just you know um making money for other people like playing sports like for college a lot of um students who play in college i mean now they're trying to get them to um get money from the endorsements and like stuff like that but before it's just like it all the money went to the coaches all the money went to the the um the college so it really shows me it's really comforting a lot to be able to experience having a black coach for at least three of my years of being playing basketball for me I've been with like a lot of coaches and coach Brett he's the only black coach I mean I've had trainers that are also black but they're not they're not my coach (laughs) so but having him there in the gym with me and like pushing me to do better and like what T said like he was just there and it was comforting but also it's just he knows that there's another level like he will mm-hmm. give it to you straight forward like he wouldn't he wouldn't cut anything out he wouldn't sweet talk it or, or go around the bush around it he would just give it to you straight forward and be like hey you're not working hard enough you want to sit the bench you can sit the bench next game like I don't care like he'll give it to you straight forward and I know that all my other like all my other coaches who weren't black they won't give it to me straight forward. They'd be like, oh, it's okay. You'll, you'll get there. And he'll just, it, it would just build bad habits, which I, which was hard, very hard to break growing up, like going, getting to the level that I am now. And it was, and also on top of that, when he gives it to me straight forward, it's a different level because he know, like we're both of color and he knows he understands what we've been through. He knows what it takes to get there and to get to the next level. But when other, like, coaches that aren't Black, they talk to me, like, the way he would talk to me, it hits differently. It's like, you don't, you don't understand. You don't understand what it goes through. You didn't have to work twice as hard as what I yeah. have to do to get to where you are. You don't have to get, you don't have to do that. All you have to do is bat your eyes, say something nice, and you get there. Or you have to go through your parents. That's it. I don't get, I don't have that. I don't have that privilege of doing that. I have to work as much as hard. I have to get noticed. I have to be in the gym 24 seven just to get someone to be like, oh, you're really good. You're pretty good. Let, let me get your number. We can do, we can do this. We can go through these things. They didn't. So for me, having him there as a coach, not only comforting, but it was more of understanding that he knows what I've been through. Mm-hmm. do you feel like you guys are treated differently as athletes and you know in today's culture the 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 black people we see you know influencing pop culture are athletes and musicians do you feel you're treated differently as athletes versus other students of color in your school's hallways honestly i i kind of see it yeah i feel like i we are treated we're more of like not the person to be suspicious of like if there is something that went wrong or like some sort of thing that happened in our mm. at our school we're not the first ones to be suspicious of other people are that they're mm. like oh we assume that you are because you hang out with this person but it's like I also hang out with that person but I'm not suspected because I'm an athlete yeah like kind of jumping off of that like a lot of my friends like um being that I'm an athlete, it's kind of, they, a lot of people in the hallways, like, I don't know, um, or a lot of people in general, when, like, things are going on, like, 
they always look at them. They never look at me because I'm an athlete and they see me on this high pedestal and think that I'm, you know, I exceed the expectations and which I, I do, but like, and I'm respectful, but like, I, I, I can, I can't really, I don't know, put it to words, but I do see like the difference between um, me who plays sports and someone who doesn't and who's also black. So. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I feel like if I wasn't to play sports, I feel like I totally would have been treated differently at my school, at least. I feel like I probably wouldn't be as, like, popular, I guess you could say. Um, because, I don't know, I feel like athletes, especially as, like, a Black woman, they kind of, at least at my school, they put you on, like, a, oh, like, you do this, like, oh, like, kind of on yeah. a standard. So I do, like, honestly, a lot of the Black kids um, that don't play sports, I personally, like, don't ever hear about them. It's really sad. Like, I only hear about the Black athletes at my school, which is, yeah, it's terrible. What do you think we at the Columbian and other sports reporters can do better? I've been looking, you know, because of this moment in time, I've been looking at ways we can we can cover and report on black athletes better and, and athletes of color. How do you think we can improve? And you can be harsh with us too. Huh. Well, I don't know, maybe like, be harsh on the like the guys <laughs> those athletes over there <laughs> I mean get their opinion on it yeah maybe I mean, like what no, team? <laughs> no I'm done <laughs> maybe like <clears throat> highlighting more of like the black athletes like I've seen a couple but it's more like um people who are I don't know, uh, I don't know like have scored the most points or is Ob- like obviously higher up than the rest of the um, athletes um like I know from a lot of people um at Evergreen all of the black athletes like they're doing amazing um but it's like what about the other people who are in between like in between skills like what about them like a lot of people I think um a lot of media always highlights the people who are more skilled um have been playing more better but it's like what about the people who are in between, you know? Um, like, I've never seen anyone who, you know, I, I don't really know how to explain it. Like, I've never seen the people who were that in between. I've always seen, like, people who are more better at everything and just being highlighted. And um, if the Colombian or even just more media would highlight those people who, you know, are getting there or are in the middle, like, I would love to see that. I don't know exactly. Like, I can't really tell you exactly what I would like to see change, but just highlighting a lot of Black athletes would be great. Yeah, I also feel like maybe, um, like, talking to more Black athletes about what they do behind the scenes of, like, athletics. Mm-hmm. So, like, how they, like, interact in the classroom and what they do, like, to, um, like, maybe clubs that they're in or, like that those type of like um interviews with black athletes because they're not just athletes like they're we're people and like we do more stuff like involved in our community than just play sports right that that was the first thing i noticed when i was kind of reviewing what we've done in the past is we'll frequently highlight a white athlete as a a student athlete but very rarely do we have black athletes featured as oh this person's great in the community and this person's great in the classroom we often tend to focus just on their athletic achievements so i appreciate you guys all commenting on that i'll I'll have last question i know some of you have to get to go um what changes do you hope come from this moment in time you know where, where do you hope what do you hope this country looks like you know in five years and on the other side of these protests? Um, well, for me, I've, um, I want to see, like, I know a lot of people, like, um, talk about, you know, the problem, but they never talk about what needs to be, like, solved. Like, what, what is it? Like, what's that it that needs to be happening? And, like, with the protests and stuff going on, um, I've actually talked to one of my teachers about it, too. Um, there needs to be a someone a job someone in the police department that have specific, specifically a job that um um pays attention to the cops that have had um the um, 15 20 complaints from and just african-american community and a lot of people because 
a lot of things that have been happening with like the George Floyd, with the police officer that killed him, he had so many complaints and no one looked into it. Um, and talking to an ex like um, police officer, he said that they, they don't, they don't look into it. They just, they recognize it, but they shove it off. They're like, you're a police officer. And people are going to complain about you. But when you see a specifically like group of people that are getting attacked by this one person, if you think about it, if there was a job or a person in the police department that had the job to look into that and specifically do their job and they got paid a lot of money to do it, to do their job, things like the police officer that um, killed George Floyd wouldn't have been there. He would have been, he would have got his badge to go away and George lives would, he would still be here. So I feel like that's, that's a change that needs to happen. Um, and another thing, just with the world in general, people need to be more educated. Schools need to be ed more educated. There needs to be just not not a week, not not a month, not months need like for Black History. There needs to be like I don't know a whole unit, a whole like you know. It needs to be even. Like there's no way that I'm sitting here learning about white um, white history when what about the Native Americans? What about the Black people were there first? You know what I mean? Like, that needs to be happening. But it's just people need to be more educated and we need to help them be more educated. From the Black community, we need to help, you know, people that aren't colored. We need to stop calling them ignorant. We need to stop yelling at them. We need to, instead of yelling at them and calling them ignorant and calling them names, we need to tell them why they're ignorant. Tell them, like, explain what I, you've had to go through so that they can get some type of understanding, some type of ed education so that they can see on the inside, so they can see your opinion, so they can understand what they're doing is wrong. So. I agree with you. Yeah, totally. Hardly. <laughs> and on top of that, I would, five, six year, years from now, I want my kids to come home and be like, I learned this in school. Not white history, but black history. Yeah. That's what I wanted to hear. And I, I don't want to be afraid of whether or not I'm going to be able to see my child again. Yeah. Or whether or not I'm going to see my parents, my grandparents, at that, on that matter. Because I remember, because when the process started and there was curfew, my grandparents were scared for my life. But I was scared for their life because they lived in Oregon. And there is looting and there is people breaking in and breaking windows. I was scared for their lives, not mine. But for them to tell me and be like, you're going to go home right now. Like, I don't care if nothing's clean. You're going to go home right now. It's just heartbreaking to see that. Yeah, I think in like four or five years from now, I think it just like needs to be more educational, especially in schools, like be learning way more about black history. And also I think there needs to be more of an urgency to like, um, at least for my school, like we don't even have a black student union anymore. Like they don't even say we have it. Like it needs to be more out there and people need to embrace it more even like if they're white, like any type of cultural background. And I also feel like in the police department, too, they need to be held accountable exactly like what um, you guys were saying with the, um, the police that have the, um, what's it called? I don't know what it's called. Sorry. <laughs> um, oh, they have complaints on them. They need to be held accountable. And also maybe like more schooling to weed out the police on Black history. Like they need to be um, educated more on it. Well, I appreciate um, all three of you for joining me today and um, talking about this. I know sometimes it's not easy, but I really appreciate you joining and, and being willing to, to kind of speak out on some of these issues. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope you have a good rest of your day for all of you. And, and I hope um, that there's change on the other side of this thing. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Have a good day. Bye. <laughs>